Hey guys, welcome back to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm doing a series called What Makes This Singer Great? And next up to the plate is Glenn Hughes from Deep Purple. Now, when I think about Glenn and I think about what makes him great, uh, of course I think about Deep Purple and Richie Blackmore and that whole era, right? Uh, I think about his bass playing, he's a good bass, bass player, uh, so instrumentalist um, as well as a singer. And uh, quite a few other things. So before we get started, um, please like and subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. Awesome. Don't forget to ring that bell uh, so I can keep more cool videos coming your way. And I have a singing course. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. And you can check it out right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. For those of you that want to learn how to sing or want to take your voice to another crazy level, uh, that would be super awesome too. But getting back to Glenn, so I think him as being a really cool blues singer. In fact, he's coined as being the voice of rock. And that's probably not too far from the truth. Um, yeah, he had a lot of great range. Uh, he Again, his sassy, soulful, funky side really you know sticks out in fact um, when he and David Coverdale were in Deep Purple together uh, I guess David Coverdale always wanted Glenn to sing the song first to see kind of how he approached it before David actually sang so I thought that was pretty interesting to get that kind of kudos from someone like David Coverdale uh, way back in the day um, I also think of spe speaking of bass um, you know I personally like teaching instrumentalists oftentimes more than just singers because they understand the amount of time and effort that it takes to put into an instrument and the voice is exactly that an instrument so because he was a great bass player all of a sudden you know we're able to translate that you know instrumentation or the concept of the hours and the technique and just you know the relentlessness of just going at this instrument he does that vocally and so i find that a lot of those guys uh, do a lot better singing wise because they'll apply that to their singing so that's something uh, certainly Glenn has done over the years. Now, songs that I think of, of course, are Burn, Mistreated, Soldier of Fortune, you know, and, and, and. So, but um, you tell me if I'm missing some stuff here, um, and we're going to do this by, uh, you know, you putting stuff in the comments sections of what you think about when you think of um, Glenn Hughes. But I put together a quick little montage of Glenn singing. We'll talk about his singing style and technique along the way, and let's rock. Here we go. By the way, I did mistreated, so I'll put mistreated in uh, the comment section, or uh, excuse me, in the description section. But um, let's just quickly talk about what he just did. So, you know, I said, I don't understand. You know, pharyngeally, he's really spread in his sound, so it's the opposite of modern rock music. A modern rock singer would, I don't understand, I don't understand. It's past midnight, I still see the land. He's, I said, I don't understand. Past midnight, I still see the land. People say the woman is dead. She makes you burn with a wave of a hand. Hey, and he's got he, almost a raised laryngeal position, a little froggy, but for uh, you know to do that deliberately for a tonal kind of thing that he does. So he's got that going on, and so it's very very spread sound. So it's very bright and forward, and then his distortion and tone and range and pitch and, and intonation is killer. <laughs> Epic screams. See, it's, I'm been, I'm been mistreated. Ah, he's got the yeah, yeah the kind of uh, froggy raised laryngeal position. That's for effect. He does it for effect. He doesn't have to. It's just a cool thing that he does. Cool bass, by the way, <laughs> that he does. And again, he always surrounds himself with really great players too. So. His pocket phrasing is awesome and his blues is cool. It's not rehearsed, it's very impromptu. His improv improvisation is awesome. He's just a badass, this guy, man. There's those high notes again. He loves doing that. Now, 
Now, I want to point something out, too. He's another one of these guys, like, from that era, we talked about David Coverdale, and I'm not sure when I'm gonna release all these, what makes these uh, the singer great stuff. Um, and if David's out first, you know, they have great diaphragmatic support, and it's the call register, and they've really, really, really worked that diaphragm to have that strength and endurance in the diaphragm to be able to pull this off. If he was just singing from his chest or throat, I don't think he could be able to survive and have the endurance that he does and then be able to come back out swinging and hitting those notes over and over again, which he is phenomenal at doing, so. And it's hard to play bass and sing at the same time, or any instrument. Now it's kind of, I want to point something out here that's kind of a little side note. I think Joe Bonamassa wants this kind of sound, you know, because you hear kind of going after this sound. Doesn't quite get to the Glenn level. Joe's doing great on his own, a phenomenal guitar player. But uh, Glenn's kind of got the corner on the market of that sound, but you can kind of see Joe sort of appreciating that. And Glenn's doing this, you know, funky thing with this uh, uh, Black Church Country Rival, whatever the name of that band was, I forgot. Uh, but anyway, uh, but he's that's one of his songs from here, and uh, it's a different approach, a different style to Glenn that we don't really see because we think of him in like the Deep Purple mode, right? So. And I don't have no resting place. Very and raw. I've been here all along. In your face. Do you understand? I'm a soul singer. Mover. Or mover, that's right. Coming down to get your love. A soul. Powerful acoustic performance mover. right there. Elevator. Now I'm like, my mover. Like a thriller. You know, I love those noint choices of his too, because he has a lot of really cool uh, blues uh, things that he drew, I think, from Motown and, you know, like the Aretha Franklin era, like all that, you know, really Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett kind of stuff. Um, so you can really hear that, you know, Sam and Dave. In fact, I think he said Sam and Dave were some of his favorite artists of all time, and that was really what inspired him to start singing. So, uh, anyway, guys, with that said, hopefully you liked it. That was awesome. But, but, um, I need you guys to go into the comment sections. Let me know what I miss. You know, if I miss something about him that uh, you think that best represents him, that'd be really cool. Again, I do this by request for the most part. So uh, put in the comment sections who you'd like me to do a reaction to, what makes this singer great, and check out this next video.